That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And today's Daily Dose of Stupid comes to us via Elizabeth Warren. So Elizabeth Warren, senator from Massachusetts, going to be running for the presidency, of course. Now she wants reparation for gays. So we've heard a lot about reparations for slavery, which is absurd in and of itself, and that's a whole other conversation that we'll have some other time. But now what she wants is reparations for gay couples. So the other day she introduced a bill called the Refund Equality Act, which would allow gays to retroactively amend their past tax returns to allow for tax breaks. So essentially they would say, okay, we've actually been married for years, we've just only been able to file jointly as a couple on our taxes since now. So what this act would do was allow them to go back, I don't know if there's even a limit, I guess as far back as they want to, and say, okay, we were really married back then, so now you have to retroactively recognize our marriage back then before the Obergefeld uh, decision came down and give us the tax benefits of being a married couple from all the way back then. So it looks like based on a joint committee, the joint committee on taxation did a little study on this and, and tried to see how much it was going to be. It will cost about uh, 57 million in refunds. So essentially the way it would work is they would be getting a refund from the IRS for taxes that they paid, which were supposedly illegitimate because they were actually a married couple. So th there's a whole jumble of, of different things on this. Warren actually did an interview with NBC News and said this, the federal government forced legally married same-sex couples in Massachusetts, because remember it was legal then for a long time, uh, same-sex couples in Massachusetts to file as individuals and pay more in taxes for almost a decade. We need to call out that discrimination and to make it right. Now, first of all, this is shamelessly pandering, and unfortunately we've seen a lot of this from the Democrat side for a while now. They basically have opted to just buy votes from people. That They're all coming out and saying, okay, if you vote for me, then my policy is going to be I'm going to take money from people over there and give it to you, which is the reason that you should vote for me. And they're usually lying about where they're going to get the money because they say, well, we're going to be taxing the 1% or we're going to be taxing just the uber rich or as Bernie Sanders would say, the 1%, the wealthiest. So they're saying that we're going to tax just those people. We're going to take it from those evil, evil, greedy, rich people and then give it to you. And that's going to fix everything. And that's the reason you should vote for me. They really are just buying votes at this point. Now, granted, the Democrats have been doing this for about 100 years now. But now they're really not even masking it very well. They're basically just blatantly saying, we'll take money from the, this group of people and give it to you. And that's the reason that you should vote for us. That's the reason black people should vote for us, because we're going to give you reparations for slavery. Now, there's an awful lot of black people in this country that their, their ancestors didn't even go through that. And there's an awful lot of white people that were never slave owners and, and so on and so forth. So there's a, a myriad of reasons why that doesn't work. But now they're doing the same thing with the gay community. I think what's happening here, because everything has a strategy to it, I think what Elizabeth Warren is trying to do is she's trying to take votes away from Buttigieg. Because, of course, the only section intersectionality label that Buttigieg has is that he's a gay guy. And the only one that Elizabeth Warren has is that she's a lady and using being very fast and loose with that term, but she, she's a woman. And now that she's lost the Native American thing, <laughs> Pocahontas has to fall back on the only thing that she actually does have, the only intersectionality label that she does have, which is that she's female. And so to try to sponge some of the gay votes or the people that are sympathetic to the gay vote away from Judge, she figures that this is a pretty good way to handle it. That's the way that I see it. But I will say this, I'm actually going to defend this at least in part, not to say that the reparations is a good idea, but the principle underlying it, I think is not all that terrible. So take the politics out of it, take away the fact that Elizabeth Warren is shamelessly pandering to voters and trying to buy their votes. 
take away the fact that she's probably specifically trying to hit Buttigieg to sort of bolster her own poll numbers, take all that out of it and take out the, the moral decrepancy of, of homosexuality and the Obergefell case and all of that. Let's just look at the tax code. Because I think there actually is a good point that Elizabeth is, uh, Warren is making if you look past all the, the crazy stuff. <laughs> if you dig right past that 50 feet of stupid that this thing is covered in, you actually do get to a pretty good underlying principle. And so, as dumb as this is, this does make more sense than the slave reparations because at least this is dealing with people that are still alive and that actually did have this happen to them in their lifetime. Now, whether or not you think that it was just or unjust is a different matter entirely, but the point is, at the very least, it does have that going for it. That these are things that happen to these people, not people that lived 150 years ago, people that are still alive today that did not get those tax breaks that they legally did under Massachusetts law, that kind of thing. And Elizabeth Warren was saying this is discrimination, which technically it is. Now, I don't think it's the kind of discrimination that she's talking about, but technically speaking, this is discrimination. I want you to think about this. The idea that the government is saying, you know what, you don't have to pay us quite as much in taxes if you're married makes absolutely no sense. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. For one, because people that are married tend to do economically better anyway. If you're looking at it statistically, and there's an argument to be made here of whether it's a cause and effect fallacy, is it that people that are more financially stable tend to get married? I think there's some truth to that because a lot of people tend to want to be in a place where they have financial means to be able to provide for a spouse. And they don't want to bring kids into the world unless they do know where their next meal is coming from, which, you know, is a good idea, actually. So there is something positive to be said for people that are getting married. And I've always said that is the number one uh, economic determining factor, whether or not you're economically stable or not. Whether your parents were married, if you're a kid, and if you're an adult, whether or not you were married. And so there really is something beneficial about that. So why are they giving tax breaks to people that are married when they're the ones that are more likely to be making more money? That doesn't really make any sense. And secondly, why are you getting a tax break for being married in the first place? Like, even if that economic fact weren't true, why does the government just say to you, um, yeah, you're married, so we're not going to take as much in taxes. Where did they even come up with that? You see, the problem is the tax code itself is discriminatory. It does discriminate against gay people, but it also equally discriminates against people that are not married. People like me that I'm, I'm 30 years old now, just had a birthday, which means for 12 years now, I've been paying taxes at a rate despite the fact that there are discounts for being married, which are not available to me. I don't have access to that discount. Married people are paying less than me, which is by definition discriminatory. So the question then isn't, why is the government discriminating against gay people? It's why is the government care, why are they trying to give incentives for something like that at all? Why are they in the business of trying to figure out whether or not somebody is married or not? And why is it that a single person like myself doesn't have access to the same tax benefits as non-married people? So if you're digging, like I said, you have to go through 50 feet of, of stupid that Elizabeth Warren has piled on top of this. But if you get down all the way to the principle underlying this, she's actually correct. That the tax code is inherently discriminatory and that we need to do something to resolve that. We need to do something to ensure that when we're looking at this, when we're looking at somebody and how much they should pay in taxes, that we're not saying, nope, you're single, you have to pay more. So inadvertently, what is actually being done here is that Elizabeth Warren is unknowingly making an excellent case for the flat tax, because then there's no discounts, 
10% across the board, 15%, whatever percentage you want, we can haggle on that if you want. Uh, I think Rand Paul said 15.5. I've heard people say 15 or 17. I say 10, but I'm a little bit more flexible on that. But the point is, if there's a flat tax rate and everybody's paying less and nobody gets a discount, then it's fair. We have a principle in this country called equality under the law. And whenever it comes to taxes, for whatever reason, we decide, yeah, well, to heck with that, we're throwing that out. I don't know why. I don't understand why that's the one area of law that we say, no, we're going to need some people to pay more than others. I guess because it's politically feasible or popular. And one thing that it does is it makes our system incredibly convoluted. It has the IRS seizing and holding on to your money for a large portion of the year, interest-free, by the way, and then gives it back to you when your refund comes in and pretends like they've done some great favor to you by giving you back your own money that they held against your will without interest. Now, if we want to fix the tax code in this country, pay it in one lump sum, pay it monthly, have them take it out of your paycheck like they do now, but the discounts, the, the givebacks, holding on to your return, that needs to stop. The tax code is incredibly convoluted. It should be one flat rate against the board. Everybody pays the same. Now, obviously, some people make more, so you're going to be paying more because a percentage of, of some incomes is higher than others. But the point is, at, at the end of the day, when everything's said and done, nobody's getting extra breaks or special treatments. There are no tax loopholes because there's no you can't have a loophole in a flat tax if everybody's getting charged the same. And so if you dig way past all the stuff that Elizabeth Warren is, is saying and get to the principle underlying what she's saying... That is actually sound, and that's something that we should pursue. Hey, to make sure you get all the updates, you need to go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell down there. That gets you a notification every time I post a new Bible lesson or political commentary. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America and Jesus, but I can't think of any other reason you wouldn't subscribe.